Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today we're taking a look inside Superman Volume 2, issue number 51, which is the start of the famous Triangle Era for the Man of Steel. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. Today we're taking a look inside Superman Volume 2, issue number 51 from 1990. Um, which has a cover date of January 91. It starts the Triangle Era of Superman. So Superman was relaunched in 1986, right post-crisis. John Byrne came in. He did the Man of Steel miniseries, which I loved. I read that when I was a kid, five years old. But I remember it vividly in my head, loving the Man of Steel stuff. Then he took over Action Comics, made it a team-up book. He had Superman relaunch with the new number one. He eventually left, but there were other creators as well. Adventures of Superman, for instance, was drawn by Jerry Ordway. And this book, at this point, by issue 51, because Byrne left in the 20s, right? 22, 23, something like that. Um, so here we got Jerry Ordway as the writer and the penciler here on Superman 51, but it starts the Triangle Era where it took all the Superman books and basically made one weekly Superman book out of it. And you could follow the order with this little triangle that would say the year and what number, like what week of the year. So 1991, week one, this is number one to read, right? And it started this whole era of Superman that lasted for years and years and years, all the way through like the 90s, right? So the Superman comics of the 90s are defined by this triangle stuff and like the death of Superman, the return of Superman, the electric blue Superman, the electric red Superman, all of this stuff is kind of tied into this triangle era. So I figured what a fun bit to go and the very first triangle era book, read it, talk about it, and if so warranted, go through the entire Triangle Era of Superman issue to issue. I can do that because I love Superman and I got a lot of Superman comics, so let's do that. First thing I want to talk about is this awesome cover. This is an amazing cover that is completely done by Jerry Ordway. Did he do the coloring? Um, it is colored by Jerry Ordway too, so the, the penciling, the inking, and the coloring, and what I love about this cover in particular is the duo shade. Y'all know me, you know I'm a big fan of duo shade, something that was really highlighted in those early Eastman and Laird Turtles books, but the use of the duo shade here works, the colors work. It's an interesting image that definitely has me excited to see what happens in the pages of this book. Unfortunately, what happens in the pages of this book I don't really like that much. I think I think it's a, uh, I think it's an okay comic. I was kind of disappointed. All right, so we got Jerry Ordway on art and story, Dennis Janke on the inking, Glenn Whitmore on the coloring, John Costanza on the lettering. Now at this time, DC was known to kind of be, you know, at this time Marvel's got Jim Lee, they got Rob Liefeld, they got Todd McFarlane, they got really exciting art. Now Jerry Ordway is a great artist, and he's a great classic artist. His style is really appropriate for a book like Superman. But compared to the Marvel books that were going on at the time, this is a snooze fest. It is by the numbers, typical comic book art, simple, super. Okay, we get our first shot of Superman. Now here's a, the debut of a new era, right? The triangle era of Superman. Now they didn't necessarily know what it was going to become or the, the, the respect and the reference that us fans have for this era of Superman. But man, what a whack-ass start, to be honest with you, all right? So the first time we even see Superman, he's just like holding these dudes walking in some water. There's like a radioactive leak or something. There's a flood. So like these, the cooling liquid that's around these, these rods in this nuclear reactor, it all gets messed up. And Superman's there saving these people. But like what I'm saying is, this is the first moment you see Superman in the brand new triangle era and there's cool stuff in there like like i can't tell if that's screen that's got to be screen tone you're not going to use a whole page of duo shade for that that's totally screen tone so you got the screen tone you got the stuff like that it's fine the coloring's decent enough i like the use of the purples in this issue and those blues it's typical of the of the era and i do like that coloring but man it's just boring like this does not put superman 
in a perspective where we can be awed by it, right? So Superman's just carrying these dudes out. You get a little bit of a, one of the, you know me, I always talk about how I love the original coloring on newsprint so much better than when they do it on glossy paper or when they remaster it in glossy paper. Like, they, they got a, for instance, they got an, a, an omnibus coming out of the Superman Triangle era, and they're probably going to be on glossy paper, and we will be able to look and see how these colors are going to be gaudy. So I think the colors work. Some of the choices are a little bit muddy here, so all of it like, seems like one, like here it pops. Other times, the colors themselves are fine. But the choices made, they don't all work. And it's a rather mundane book, right? But one of the faults of newsprint is that sometimes you would get this really thick, overproduced line. And that happens in some of the pages here. It has nothing to do with the original art. It has everything to do with the printing, right? Where maybe it would use too much black ink and it would soak it up too much or something like that. So Superman takes these dudes to safety. He goes in and he's got to take, he's sucking the water up in a straw, putting it back to cover the cooling rods. I mean, it's a dumb hokey kind of use of Superman's powers. There's a much more dynamic way that you could show this and other artists would have done it. But Jerry Ordway, he's just painting by the numbers. He's getting the, the paycheck. He's doing his thing. So it's an interesting enough opening. We find out some interesting things in, in, at the beginning of the Triangle Era. Lex Luthor is presumed dead. We'll find out that that's not necessarily the case. He actually reclones himself, um, or I should say, he clones himself, at, and he he starts a new life as his own son, Lex Luthor II. But he died from like kryptonite radiation poisoning, I believe, from wearing that ring, the kryptonite ring. So Superman is talking about how like I mean it's so cheesy, you know? He's like. Not so fast, mister. This wasn't just a mishap. Had I not been here, this could have been a major catastrophe. I assure you, this will be brought up to my superiors. You do that, doctor. I'll take my recommendations to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. S such cheesy, hokey, Boy Scout type stuff. But he runs out of uh, LexCorp, which is where this is all happening. Goes out into space to expel the extra radiation on him. Comes back to Earth. Then we clip to a, a hotel, or a, an airport, I should say. Airport where this mysterious dude shows up. Seems like he's hypnotizing everybody. Just look at the art. I mean, it's fine. It gets the job done. But let's take ourselves back to 1990, where you got Jim Lee on Uncanny X-Men. Where you've got uh, Rob Liefeld on New Mutants. Where you've got Todd McFarlane in Spider-Man. Like, it's, it's just, this isn't comparable. It's just not comparable. It's static. It's stiff. And... It's not exciting. It's not exciting at all, right? So this dude shows up. He's from Romania. We don't really know who he is, but he's able to, like, hypnotize people, mesmerize people. So that's going on. He's looking at the paper. Then we cut to Cat Grant and her boyfriend, Jose. This is picking and building up of a subplot that must have been in here before. Now, as much as I love and have read multiple times the John Byrne era, everything between John Byrne and here... I haven't really read, right? And I don't, I've never even actually read this comic. This is the first time I've read it, though I've had it in my collection for years. But Jose's talking about how Cat's never wanted for money. He's never had money. Things are weird. A lot of melodramatic, soap operatic bullshit. And it's fine. You know, that's what this triangle era of Superman is, is it's melodramatic. It's soap operatic. It's carrying these threads through. He goes to buy a lottery ticket. The lottery prize is $14 million. Um, he The ticket... He, he grabs this ticket, puts it in his pocket. Meanwhile, this dude who's from Romania shows up. He's trying to get mugged. These dudes are trying to mug him. And he winds up. This is a cool little bit. He's like, your friend is fast. No, his heart powerfully pumping into his muscles. Can you visualize it? His heart pumping and pumping. So he, he creates this visualization of his heart. And it's used with this nice, like, color hold uh, effect right here. And some cool, like, textured... Um, screen tone being used here but with the printing almost like the overprinting of the black ink it just doesn't quite come across as clear but marvel had the same problem in this era as much as i love the coloring on the newsprint sometimes the line work does get a little bit fuddy but he winds up killing this dude um just by visualizing his heart beating and stopping and being crushed dude's like what did you do to my friend cat's boyfriend jose shows up is this the dude that becomes peacemaker not peacemaker crime buster 
is this the dude? I don't know, but he's got an ugly brown orange coat or whatever. While he's trying to help these dudes, and he's like, no, your friend's dead. The lotto ticket pops out of his pocket and back to Bibbo, right? So Bibbo's a character that we're definitely going to come to know and mostly love here. All right, we cut to the Daily Bugle. Perry White's been a hard ass on everybody because his son recently died. He admits that he's been a hard ass. He needs to take some time off and he's going to have a new replacement for editor-in-chief, managing editor of the Daily Bugle, and it's this dude, Sam. I don't know who the hell this is, but the, all this stuff, Superman, or my bad, Clark Kent, who we know is Superman, starts getting this wave of nausea or something, and it's this it's this dude from, Roman from Romania, like, contacting him telepathically, so he leaves to go confront this era, or to go confront this dude, who we know from the cover is Mr. Z, the menace of the mysterious Mr. Z, so he takes off his, his suit, gets his Superman costume going, classic moment, but could have been done in a more dynamic way. Like, it's kind of boring. The art's very boring. Superman's shown walking so much and, like, show Superman flying, show Superman soaring, show the speed, show the intensity of it, show the power of Superman, right? But he winds up going to this museum. This dude's set up. He's like, yo, we met during World War II. This, I don't know if this gets picked up on or referenced later on, but it just... He's like, his accent is distinctly European. Superman's trying to figure it out. The dude shows up. So he's got this cane with this, like, gemstone on it. And he sucks Superman's essence into this gemstone. So what he does is, this dude's like an immortal. Mr. Z, right? He's an immortal. It's like Mr. Belvedere is your fucking villain for Superman. Like, come on, get rid. You notice all the uh, Nintendo and, and video game ads? Video games are really taking over everything here so he captures superman's essence what he does is throughout history people that are interesting to him because he leads a lonely immortal life he captures them in his gemstones so he can converse with them as he pleases so he meets these people from different eras of earth's history they're all having a chat it's boring there's this one dude there who doesn't want he's not cool with it they, they fight all of a sudden everything starts shaking and trembling superman realizes because I'm Kryptonian, his gemstone is based in earth magic. So since I'm Kryptonian, it's messing it up. So I'll start speaking Kryptonese and it blasts the gemstone apart and frees Superman, allowing all these other spirits that have been trapped in there to escape and actually move on to the afterlife to die or something like that. And then Superman, nice little color hold, little effect right here where Superman goes back into his body. But... The Mr. Z is now in some kind of a trance. I supposed he was immortal. Well, I'd say you got that one wrong. This dude's deader than a doornail. And then a body in the morgue gets up and walks away. And it's this dude again. And he's taken on the name George Bailey, like the guy in the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yes, Wonderful Life indeed. And that's it. That's your story. That's this book. That's what happens. It, it's It's dull. It's boring. It's not exciting. Splatterhouse, what a great video game, by the way. TurboGrafx-16, never had one of those. I had a friend that had one, and that game was gnarly. Um, this is a boring comic. It's really dull. The art and the story. The art, you know, Jerry Ordway is a classic artist. I really do like Jerry Ordway's style. I've met Jerry Ordway. I got him to sign one of his first Adventures of Superman's comics that he did. I got him to sign his Power of Shazam number one. I love Jerry Ordway's work. But this story and the art and the way that Superman's being portrayed here, it's just boring. It's dull. I like some of the colors that are utilized, but the choices themselves, I mean, there's some pages where it works. I love the light blue and the, the lavender right there. Very, like I said, typical of the time. But for the most part, it's dull. Nothing breaks a panel. Like, this is the most dynamic interesting shot we get is something like that you got this side story stuff that's interesting nice use of screen tone here and there but overall it's a boring static stiff comic where it's literally mr belvedere is the first villain of superman's new triangle era luckily there's more exciting dynamic comics to come i'm sure when i was a kid i loved superman in this era but man what a what a sad start to this. I mean, there's some, like I said, Jerry Ordway, he draws the figure nice. He knows anatomy. It's all nice. And I know that we say certain things like maybe Todd McFarlane doesn't know anatomy. Maybe uh, the figure work of, of uh, 
Jim Lee is 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 suspect, you know, not quite real or the same thing with Rob Liefeld, but they knew how to make exciting comics and even these kind of moments like it's just Superman feels boring and dull and old school and you know, I've heard this said before, but in this era where you got Marvel and that explosion they're having with what who are going to be the the image founders, Superman felt like dad's comics. Superman felt like your grandfather's comic. This felt so old school that it had no connection to the youthful audience that was reading comics at this time. So it just, it didn't necessarily work then, and it's not necessarily working now. 100%. I did not like this comic, but I'm excited to keep going through the Triangle era because I do have fond memories of this, and I know that a couple years later, when they're finally trying to catch up and they're pulling big things out like weddings and deaths and funerals for friends and all that kind of stuff like maybe we can find a little bit more enjoyment but man this was a dull stiff stagnant boring comic that i did not like but I'm glad it's still a part of my collection glad i got to read it glad i got to talk with you here do you want more triangle era of superman what's your recollections of the Superman Triangle era. What do you think about this issue in particular? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And join us over at patreon.com PCP if you want to help support the channel. Um, I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. <laughs> keep on reading, keep on loving, and uh, station pop pop boom, y'all.